Hi everybody. Last week the 2024 Vuelta route has been revealed and I must say it looks very promising and is in my opinion by far the most interesting parkour of the three Grand Tours for 2024. Running from August 17th to September the 9th, the 79th Vuelta will cover a total distance of 3265 kilometers. The organizers indicate the Vuelta comprises one flat stage, five medium mountain stages, eight mountain stages, two individual time trials and five hilly stages, two of which having a high altitude finale. The inaugural stage of La Vuelta will be an individual time trial consisting of a flat 12k route for the true specialists. This time trial, as well as stages 2 and 3, will be run in Portugal. On stage 2, the riders will be presented with a 190k stage that goes up and down all day. The fourth category Alto de Batalla will initiate the finale of this stage and may mess with the plans of any sprinter brave enough to line up for the Vuelta. That being said, I expect those who will line up to have no issues with this climb and to contest the stage in a reduced bunch sprint. Stage 3 then looks like a break stage at first sight, a difficult start and a second category climb at the halfway mark, which should allow for a strong break to form and gain time on the peloton. Then again, the climbs are not steep and the teams with a versatile sprinter in their midst may well try to keep the break in check, having 40k at hand to reel in the break from the top of the Alto de Alpedrinha. In this year's Vuelta, we only have to wait till stage 4 to be presented with some proper climbing. At 167k it's a relatively short stage, having a brutal start, climbing out of the gate and featuring a second and a first category climb in the first 50k. Expect a strong break to form here. The stage ends atop the Pico Villuercas, which comprises 3 km on cement ramps with inclinations hovering around 15%. We've seen this finale before on stage 14 of the 2021 Vuelta, where Bardet won with a 6km solo from a large 20-person breakaway. Also for this edition, I'm going to call this one for the break. Stage 5 then is the most obvious and only real sprint opportunity in the 2024 Vuelta. And on stage 6 we move back into the mountains, yet with mellow climbs, including the finish climb. This one has break written all over it. Stage 7 is hilly again, and not unlike stage 2, with the main obstacle sitting at 25k from the finish line. This second category climb outside Cordoba has slopes that go to 14%. A similar stage has been run back in 2011, 2014 and 2021, where it were respectively Dege, Kolop, Sagan and Magnus Kort winning the stage in reduced group sprints of respectively 5, 60 and 40 riders. Stage 8 then is a medium mountain stage with a category 3 finish climb, 4.3k at 8% average. The organizers expect a sprint of the GC men, a logic which is hard to contest. Week 1 ends with the first properly brutal stage, 178k from Motril to Granada, with an upward start and three back-to-back -back first category climbs in the second half of the stage. This climb runs at 9.2% average over 7.3 kilometers. This is money time for the GC men. There's 50k of downhill to the finish from the last summit, which some GC men may not like. Then again, I do expect this stage to go to a GC rider and it will mean the end of GC ambitions for some. After the rest day, we will start week 2 as we ended week 1 with lots of climbing. Coming out of a rest day with a first category climb will hurt and as on stage 9, I would not be surprised to get some GC contenders dropping out of contention here. As on stage 9, there's a long downhill section to the finish. This combined with the big climb at the start of the stage tells me this one has high chances to go to the break. Stage 11 is a 164k medium mountain sawtooth stage, which I also expect to go to the break, climbing out of the gate and up and down all day. Considering what's coming over the next few days, I can't imagine the GC contenders to care about this particular stage. Expect the brake riders to cooperate till that final steep climb, 2.8k at 9.2%. On stage 12, we get a 133k short mountain top finish. The entire approach goes up and down relentlessly, yet it's short, so teams to the like of Bora are likely to control this for Roglic to finish it off in the sprint. The steep finish climb on stage 13, consisting of 7.7k with an inclination of 9% average, with the final 5k running at 12%, make this GC territory. At 199k, stage 14 is the longest stage of La Vuelta 24. The first 100k rise gradually and a strong break should be able to form here. From there, they descend into a long 23k regular first category climb. 
I'm calling this one for the break. The second week of competing will conclude with a short yet tough Asturian mountain stage. Prior to the mountaintop finish, they'll climb the Alto de la Coladiela twice. The Cute Negro mountaintop finish is brutal. It starts gently, ramps up in the middle section to feature ramps up to 23% beyond the Payares Ski Resort. Money time for the GC men who'll battle it out for the win on this 25k long climb. The final week of the Vuelta starts with another mountain stage, 181k, and ending atop the ore category climb to Lagos de Covadonga. This is going to hurt for some. A similar stage was run in the 2021 Vuelta, won by Roglic, who took 1 minute and 35 seconds on his competitors. Also for this edition, I'm going to call it for GC. Stage 17 will be break against the versatile sprinters. This is the final opportunity for the sprinters in this edition of the Vuelta. I'm not sure whom amongst the fast men will still be in the race though. Whomever's there will smell a chance and set his teammates to work and chase the break. Stage 18 is a medium mountain stage, which may go to the break or may be won from a reduced bunch print. The Puerto Herrera is 5.5k long at 8.4% average and will rule out the remaining sprinters. Some of the punchy guys will stay in the bunch though. On stage 19, we get another mountaintop finish, ending on the Alto de Moncalvillo, 8.5k at 9%. In 2020, a similar stage has been ran, and at that time Roglic and Carapaz battled it out, with Roglic taking the win. Also this time around, I expect the GC contenders to battle it out. And then, oh my goodness, the penultimate stage to Picon Blanco, 7.6k at 9.1%, this far into a Grand Tour, and after a brutal day in the saddle. Money time for the GC. Finally, La Vuelta will end with a 22k flat individual time trial. So to summarize, without knowing the actual race situation, we have two individual time trials, one pure sprint stage, four stages that can be won by a versatile sprinter, two medium mountain break stages and four mountain break stages, and finally eight potential GC days, some of which may of course also end up going to the break. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and see you soon for my Tour de France 2024 Route Insights.